In this video I'm going to explain firstly about the gun that I use to shoot rabbits and also a few basic tips to enable you to shoot better, more accurately and also and most importantly shoot more rabbits. A lot of people have asked me what rifle I use when I go shooting so I've made this video to show you. This is it. It's an Anschutz 1517.17 HMR. With a Harris swivel bipod and ESE silencer. The scope is a relatively cheap BSA Sweet 17 with a bullet drop compensator on the top. Not that I ever use it, it's just a, a nice solid clear scope. The magnification on it is 3 to 12 by 40. Guns bolt action. With a four shot mag, which doesn't sound like much, but just encourages you not to waste any bullets. This gun has got a factory shortened barrel, which means that when you're creeping up on things, you can carry the gun down at your side without it dragging on the ground. You can swing it around inside a vehicle easily. You can put it up over walls very easily. It's just a nice, light, easy to handle gun. The bullets that I use are very light. They're a 17 grain ballistic tip bullet. It means that when they hit something, providing it's you know something other than very soft skin, the inside of the bullet implodes, the rest explodes. All the energy is released in one go means that especially for small game even a shot that's not in the you know kill zone not in the heart not in the head say it's through the back or something it's the amount of energy released is still gonna kill it straight away which to me is very important because no matter how careful you are there'll always be some shots that don't hit exactly where you want no matter how good a shot you are first thing to consider is Camouflage. Makes a hell of a difference when they can't see my baldy shiny head and also when they can't see my white t-shirt. Stands out like a sore thumb. Whenever I go shooting I might not always wear camouflage pants like I've got on now or camouflage wellies but I always make sure I wear some sort of either dark green or camouflage jacket. You see how it blends into the background? Hands, head stick out like a sore thumb. Sometimes wear gloves in the winter if it's cold. But I generally have a camouflage jacket with a hood. So if I am creeping up on something, it makes me a lot less visible. Whether you're shooting with a bow, a gun, you know, a rifle, shotgun, a spear or sling, if you use natural cover, i.e. ferns, trees, creep up behind them, you know, get them between you and your target, then you stand a much better chance of getting closer. Also consider what your target is looking at when it's looking at you. It's generally on or near the ground. So therefore, if you can get down to the ground as well, it's not going to see your silhouette against the skyline. Doesn't matter how camouflaged you are, but if you cast a great big silhouette on that skyline, whatever it is you're hunting is going to disappear. Another very important thing is, if you have keys, put them in a pocket or in a backpack where they can't jingle. Switch off your mobile phone. There's nothing more irritating when you're lying down just about to squeeze the trigger and you hear some horrendous ringtone which scatters everything. I know because it's happened to me on a few occasions and I'll leave my phone in the car when I go shooting. With regard to the technique for actually taking the shot, this is how I do it. If I can, I always try to lie down with a bipod out, 
means that you're very steady, you know, that the front of the gun is supported. I then get behind the gun, obviously, because it's dangerous to get in front of it. Left hand under here, right hand comes around. Like that, very, very still. My legs are in this position. And what that does, it flattens my body right to the ground means there's, there's no one or two points of contact. I'm very flat, very steady on the ground, which means that the crosshairs, when you look through the scope, are also gonna be very steady. If they're steady, there's a good chance that I'll hit whatever I'm shooting at. When it comes to actually taking the shot, when you've got it lying down with the bipod, breathing isn't so important. Unless you're shooting a, a real extreme range, which I tend not to. Um, instead of pulling the trigger in an excited fashion, I would tend to just squeeze. I'm quite lucky because this gun's got a very good trigger. It's got a two-stage trigger. So you've got a little bit of play. And as soon as it stops, that's when it's going to go off. So I tend to have it pulled until I can feel it's just about to go off when the crosshairs are steady, bang. One obvious thing to consider is getting to where you're going to take your shot from as quietly as possible. If you make noise or you make disturbance, something's going to see you and it's going to spook it. So when you're walking, you want to try and avoid any branches, anything that's going to make a noise, plastic bottles, any muck lying around, as quiet as possible. After a while it just becomes second nature and you'll be able to find that you'll be able to keep your eyes on your target and still avoid all the things that could possibly make a noise on the ground. One simple thing that most people don't consider is always work into the wind and then any scent that you're carrying is blown away from your target. Another very useful tip is to use the sun. If you have the sun at your back, so i.e. you are between the sun and your target, your target is going to be looking into the sun, which means it's going to be even less likely to spot you creeping up on it. Okay, we're in the process of approaching a couple of quite big rabbit sets and I'm going to share with you my favourite trick. Um, I'm not going to shoot any rabbits because it's on my doorstep. I don't really like shooting them on my doorstep. I like to see them, believe it or not. Uh, I tend to just shoot where there's plagues of them, purely for control. Um, what I'm going to do is creep up to the set, allow the rabbits, if there's any there, to dive down the holes and then call them out again. It's a technique I use quite a lot as it, it can sometimes double the amount of rabbits that you get outside a set but it's something I've never heard of anybody else using. Quite close to the rabbit set now. I haven't seen any rabbits but I'm gonna try and call one out. Obviously if I was wanting to shoot one I could shoot one if they come out. Here we go. That was highly unsuccessful at that set. So I'm gonna try at another set. Lo and behold, when I try it another set, the rabbit comes out of the first set.
see how interested the rabbit is in the sound. I first started doing this when I was shooting in pretty much plagued areas. I'd shoot everything outside the set and then because it was surrounded by rushes I would start to squeak and I found that the rabbits were actually coming out of the holes. Rabbits that hadn't previously gone in the holes or ones I hadn't previously seen were just suddenly popping up. It's a very effective method. All I do, I go just purse your lips and suck in or if you wet your finger but obviously doing it that way ties up one of your hands. It's excellent for calling foxes in also. If you look at the rabbit hole Basically just like a large funnel, designed to funnel the rabbits into it obviously for safety but it also helps to funnel sound in and that's very important. No matter what a great shot you are, um, and everybody thinks they're the world's greatest shot, you know as do I, um, we're never going to shoot anything unless we can actually see the target species that we're after. Rabbits are one of the most difficult because they often lie very, if they see you before you see them, they often lie very flat to the ground and it's, it's just looking for minute differences. They often go in grass the same colour as themselves and with them being a prey species, they're the same colour as fallen leaves, dry grass. It's, the key is just looking for little differences between them and the surrounding countryside. That's what they're looking for with you. So the more you can blend in, the more chance you have of getting close to them before they can see you. I always like to shoot rabbits without them even knowing I'm there. Um, I don't really, although I shoot, I don't really like the idea of chasing things towards guns or you know, sitting waiting for pigs to come and all that and baiting things. And I prefer to shoot things without them realizing I'm there. A lot of the advice in this video will be geared towards shooting rabbits because obviously primarily that's what I do. Although I also get the odd fox as well. That tends to be with a lamp though. Uh, which I'll cover in another video. I also do lamp for rabbits, but generally I shoot them during the day with the 1.7. If I'm shooting them on a night, I would tend to use the 2.2, simply because it's semi-automatic and you can get more shots in, because quite often you, you don't get such a long exposure time with your targets. Although I've been talking reasonably loud on this video, it's purely just so that the microphone here picks up my voice. Obviously if you're out shooting by yourself you'll not be talking to anybody. Unless you're schizophrenic and you're talking to yourself. Like people think I'm probably doing now if anybody could see me. Um, but if you're out with somebody else, just make sure you keep your voice down. It's amazing how far sound carries. Especially on a damp day, it can carry a long way. That's all from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it encourages you to get out there and become a more efficient hunter. Thanks for watching.